Hello, welcome to Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. Thank you guys for listening to our podcast all around the world. Make sure you check out the website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we have so many great articles and blogs on the site for you to check out. And make sure you give us a call anytime, 1-800-420-1980 is that number. Go check out our Instagram pages, at Cannabis Talk 101. Blue is at the number one, Christopher Wright, and I am at Joe Grande 52 And I don't know if you guys seen the latest edition of the Cannabis Talk magazine, but it has so many great articles and blogs on there some great stories get yourself a hard copy today at your local dispensary or smoke shop near you if they don't have one make sure you have them give us a call and hit us up for one or check it out online at cannabis talk and subscribe now we have mary hanging out with us today not hey, only Joe. doing her thing but she's hey, actually Joe. in studio with us she's not it. on a zoom she's actually sitting next Yay. to me which is great and we have the other two girls connor and daniel as hello, well hanging hello. out with us too <laughs> Thank you guys for joining with us. You know, I want to just do some some good content and stories and talk about some things. I know I got some stories. I know you guys got some stories up your sleeves. And Mary, you can give us your doctor expertise uh, help with all of that we're going to be talking about. Because the first story that I want to talk about is a new study that they did on sleep and CBD. Now, I know all three of you are very active THC users. And Connor and I just came from an event where he was given a brand new uh, Puffco Peak Pro. Oh, love Puffco. And he love opened Puffco. it up there, yeah. and I actually made him my very own wax for the first time and gave it to him, and he tried it and everything. Nice. It, was a, it was a fun bonding Amazing. moment for us, right? It was. And, oh, we even rode up together. I got to tell wrote, you guys, yeah. this is so random and cute, because Connor, be Con- well, Connor's like a son to me, right? And then, I'm jealous. So we're good. <laughs> we go downtown, and... Just for you to know, Daniel, and anybody else listening, if you roll with me, you're rolling home with me. So, and if not, I'm going to put you in an Uber or something. But <laughs> Connor does one of the funniest, strangest things. And he's like, hey, um, is it cool if you give me a ride back? And I looked at him like, what the hell are you talking about, dog? Just check him he's like, I'm, just, yeah, I'm like, dude, I brought you here. Of course I'm going to yeah, take yeah, you yeah. back to your car. Yeah. I mean, we grew we from Orange County to L.A. We're downtown. I got you. And I was like, dude, no matter what, even if I get some strange, I'm still going <laughs> to make go. sure you get home all right. That's, That's right. loyalty. I mean, it was just so random. And Dylan said that, though, didn't I? I go, dude, even if I get some strange, I'm going to make sure you yeah, go you're like, home. You're like, I'll give you the keys. Don't worry Yeah, about you'll it. take my car and I'll Uber home. I'm not the boy that does that to his boys. Yeah, oh, that communication. It was funny, though, that I was like, Connor, geez, what kind of dudes do you hang out with? That you have to worry about that with me. I was a little surprised that. Yeah, no, that's on me. That's on me. But it was the situation rectified. Yeah. I so now know going forward. It was a side note. But, you back. Well, it was just a side note, too, of learning. You know how you hang out with new people? And you never know, yeah. right? You know yeah. what I mean? But it was funny that Connor did that to me. Daniel, on the other hand, has never done that to me. Daniel, not that I've driven. Daniel usually drives me, I think. I don't think I've I driven Daniel. Daniel drove me yeah. this weekend. Did he weekend. drive you this weekend? He totally week? drove me this weekend. Are you yeah, Daniel's me? more oh, the master, Daniel. right? Oh, so my gosh. Fun. It was oh, awesome. Man. We had so Daniel's much fun. Daniel's good for that. Connor hasn't drove me. Well, he could have drove, but it was easier for me because I know they were probably going to drink and smoke. And so my point is, I know you guys are all heavy THC users, right? Yes, Everybody sir. uses it. Yep. Now, my question is, do you guys ever have a problem with sleeping at night because maybe you have, you're have you too high or you're just staying up late? I know you, Mary, you're probably never really getting sleep because you're always up late, probably. I am. I'm always up late. I was one of those that was just genetically blessed, like not needing sleep. And I tell you, people are like, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, how do you do what you do and need your sleep? Like, that's what I don't know. How much sleep right? do you get at night, probably? Probably about three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Do you guys have pr- trouble sleeping at night because you've been smoking too much in the day? Or are you just going through, you know, whatever you do? Because I know Mary, already talking to you, you don't get that much sleep at night. No, and I don't need it, though. You can function. Like, I'm, I'm different. Totally can function without it. But I know a lot of people can. How many hours do you think you get a night? Probably about three. Three yeah, hours a night? Yeah, and three, three Consistently three? Consistently, yeah. What about you, Connor? I'd say I, I try to get at least five to six, although I do have a hard a time. Good boy. <laughs> I have a hard time sleeping and like I initially had started using cannabis to help me go to bed but you know I've done some research over the past few years and you know I've learned that it like you're not going fully into REM sleep when you're yes. you know using cannabis and so you're kind of like when you skip so much REM sleep like REM has to come out at some point even if you're not sleeping so there's a lot of like you know, psychosis can be a byproduct of that along with a lot of other things. So I've tried to really not smoke before I go to bed and I've definitely had a lot more quality of sleep. Whereas like, you know, I'll give it like 
two hours, three hours before I even do go to bed, and I'll just cut it off. And I have been able to get like more than six or seven hours of sleep. I'm so glad you said that, and I want to hear from Daniel. But I have Daniel, so what much about to say you? About that, Joe. For me, it's different. Because um, it you're always doing meth? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just the kidding. The come down is horrible, Joe. Right <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But uh, anyways, so uh, it depends. You're like me, me, the heaviest meth user when I was doing meth. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, dude. I was meth and a double cheeseburger. <laughs> Smacked. <laughs> and I really would, too. It's crazy, but go ahead. So um, if I'm eating an edible, I'm the guy at night, four in the morning, just Googling, like, how do I come down off an of edible? How do I come down? But if, if I'm taking a dab, I'm smoking weed regularly, normal, I could get a good five, six hours sleep. So five, six hours. Yeah. Yeah, because they're saying, too, a lot of people have trouble going to sleep when they are smoking right before they go to bed, right? But now, a, a study that I found, no, a lot of us here, of course, know this, but I think it's a... My theory is a lot of people that just smoke cannabis don't realize that CBD is so helpful for sleeping at night, yeah, right? Definitely. And a new study that just came out is saying 15 milligram of CBD improves quality of sleep for people with a history of sleep disturbances. And I'm just wondering, Miss Mary, with three yes, hours of yes. sleep, would you be willing to do something like this where you're like, let me put a CBD regimen in there because if I do do something like that, Rather than a lot of people taking the melatonin, but they're saying five milligrams mm -hmm. of melatonin along with a combination of minor cannabinoids will really help with that. And they did a huge study, right, that they they found that 75 percent of these participants, and I think it was over 20,000 participants, found that they got better sleep out of it. So it just Incredible. makes me think going so many people use cannabis to feel better on a, a, a bunch of reasons. Right. Pick yeah. it, pick it, pick it, pick yeah, it. Yeah, or they yeah. just want to get high. Cool. But then these are so many people, too, that have trouble with going to sleep at night. And even including myself, like, I used to do morning radio, and I, too, Mary, was a three- to four-hour guy because I'm waking up every day by 4 a.m. to be at the station by 5 a.m. We're going live by 6, so I have to have everything prepped and ready to go, live mm -hmm. radio, morning radio. And that was my life from, like, 92 or, yeah, 92 to, to for a long, long time until I was out here in the... Two, in, 2000s you know working at power 106 and everything else and kiss fm but my point is i didn't used to need a lot of sleep yeah and now i find myself because i'm using so much cbd it puts me out but my mind my isms in my head keep me up yes that <laughs> i um We'll have to fall asleep on my couch first. I was literally about to say. I can't right? just like, go to my bed. You wake up because you got your mind going. going I can't like, just I walk into my do. bed and yeah. be like, oh, I'm going to go to yeah. sleep right you gotta now. you got to wind down. Hey, right? Chanel, let's go to bed now. No, I'm like, I need to fall asleep on my couch watching something. So I tell you, like, that's exactly, Connor, I love what you just said about THC and knowing what you know now. Because, yeah. y'all, five years ago, people didn't know that. Everybody was like, I have to have THC to sleep. I have... Look, I love THC. THC is amazing, but we give it so much credit for parts of the plant that are doing other things to you, like CBD, that's really not THC, right? Yeah, right. THC, you're essentially tapping into your own bliss chemical, right? So when you smoke so much THC, it will knock you out, but I can guarantee you nine out of 10 people will be like, yeah, I don't stay asleep, right? Or if you do stay asleep, you say, hey, do you wake up groggy? And they're like, yeah, because I don't get that, you know, in that REM state. So. Yeah. You have to understand, so first of all, I'm not a doctor, right? I write curriculum for doctors. I look at the research. I kind of do that, like, practical application, that connection of, like, what does it mean in the industry, the cannabinoids that we have access to, and then what does it mean in the human system? And you noted most people are taking melatonin, right? right? If you're using cannabis, a lot of times you're for sleep, you're using other products yeah. that are contributing to assistance in sleep. So... You really have to think about like how the cannabis works in your system, how it's like impacted by those other compounds. And so one of the worst things that I've seen cannabis companies do, right? This is, this is great because it's a valid study and you're looking at a system. But when they're like, oh, valerian root helps with sleep. Melatonin does. CBD does. CBN does. So we're just going to throw all that shit in there. Can I throw shit on there? Yeah, okay? whatever you want. Yeah. Throw all that shit in there and then it's going to be good for you, right? So we would have like patients coming in the clinic with baskets of products. Like it's just not working. It worked for a week and now it doesn't work anymore, yeah, right? Exactly. You're essentially like you can't standardize cannabinoids. You have to do what works for you. But y'all, it's not, it's really not about the THC. And it's the same with pain, right? You mentioned that. People go, Oh, I have to have THC for pain. No, mm -hmm. makes you forget about the pain. It's the CBD, the CBG, that's truly anti-inflammatory, like 10 times more anti-inflammatory than THC. Totally. So it's just that applying, knowing what we know, right? And not only that, I looked up some of these side effects because everything, 
that everybody says, let's just face it, before, you know, we're hearing about take some good CBD at night, call it sleep, call it tar, whatever you want to call it from whatever brand you do, right? And we have some at our house from, ironically, Cali FX that I'm using called yes. Sleep. Oh, and, yeah, you know, and, and, I, and I love it. And my wife uses it daily where my wife never used, she's never smoked a joint, yeah. right? Never has done anything like that in her life. Yeah. But she'll use CBD at night, every night, and it puts her to sleep. Mm -hmm. I have another buddy of mine named Tim Bell. Shout out to you, Tim. Loves it now, too. Never. Well, I'm sure he smoked and partied before, but he's not Mr. Let Me Use This. But he noticed that when he takes that CBD, it helps him go to sleep and he has yeah. problems with sleeping. So it's just funny, though, that I don't think that a lot of people out there in the world really realize how helpful that CBD really is. And I think the people that don't realize it are the ones that are the heavy smokers. Absolutely. Because I think the heavy smoker right, right. looks at it like, fuck CBD. Yeah, I'm not doing that stupid right? shit. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get me yeah, high. Totally. I'm not using totally. it, right? Well, why That's are you my perception of it, yeah. Right? But, but, and then I looked at some of these side effects that it helps with melatonin. And some of the things I, I looked up right here were like, okay, so if you're going to take a melatonin, you're going to look out for stomach aches, yep. feeling sick and nausea, feeling dizzy, feeling irritable and restless, dry mouth, dry and itchy skin, just to name a right. few that, you know, of course, we've all taken it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I have a box of it at the house now. I mean, who are we kidding? But what would you guys recommend for somebody who is trying to sleep and stay asleep without the THC? Because... I recently gave my 73-year-old father an edible, oh. and he was so fucking pissed because he couldn't <laughs> go to sleep, and he's like, I got to wake up and do my blood work, and I can't fucking sleep. And blah, Your blah, dad blah. mad at you? Yeah, he was pissed because me, I had the heavy THC you know, smoker right you here. You were yeah. thinking this oh, would be totally. great for him. I'm like, like this will put him out. Take a but I think that's what the most common thread is, right? I People couldn't think. sleep either. I have two I was... answers for you. I have yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, okay, go ahead. So, well, no. So, first of all, to your grandfather, there's a new it's product dad. out there. Or your dad, sorry. The new product out there is called Undo, and it's phenomenal. And it has nothing to do with cannabis, but it, it like, it targets the ameliorate acid in your body. And if you're feeling too high, you take a little capsule, and it's just like, whew, really brings you down. And there's so many people like, oh, I don't ever Undo. get too high. People get too high. Even if you love THC, sometimes you get too high, right? You just kind of want to just get back to baseline. So the other one, um, and I'm going to give a plug for one of my old products, is called Polite. And so we created this because the patients were coming in, like none of this product is working. And what we did was we took uh, a very, very high uh, ratio of cannabinoids to Ayurvedic herbs, right? And we didn't throw a bunch of random stuff in there. We had a doctor with their master's in Ayurveda. We had our cannabinoid expertise, and we had a pharmaceutical or a, a allopathic doctor, right, an MD, who were all looking at like how these compounds could be in the human system. And you go to staypolitehemp.com and you get the rest well, easy to understand. And it has been one of the best products out there on the website. It's got education and it's it like tastes good too, mm -hmm. right? And it's like it's a super uh, balanced product, but it's meant to not knock you out, right? You're not going to take it and just go to sleep. It's going to help you get to sleep, stay to sleep, and not wake up groggy. And we we literally did it. Not, I mean, for me, it wasn't about profit. It was. You about said it was polite. Giving, polite, and the whole thing mm. on that is you shouldn't have to wait till the end of the day, right, to take cannabinoids because they make you feel high. You should be able to take them, be fully functional, and I call it functional euphoria. So whether it's for sleep, energy. Well, yeah, I think anything, there's a, there right? should be a regimen that people, yeah. you know, I, I look at the THC and just the whole cannabinoid system that you can utilize. Like I have my morning regimen of taking it's literally called sex and then i take pain <laughs> i think it's called pain or pain relief and the reason why i use the sex this one yeah. yeah and, and the no, reason no, why no, i like no, the no, sex no. one is yep. because it has the blood flow right. right and it's not like i'm sitting here walking with a stiffy <laughs> by no means yeah you know what i mean but it just <laughs> i know it helps my blood flow <laughs> well well it, didn't, it wouldn't hurt but you know what i mean it's I've like i've never had one i wouldn't know exactly but, but my point is, is the reason why I take that, and that's my regimen, and then I take the, the pain relief because right after I use it in the morning, right after I go to the gym, and so it just helps with my aches and pains as I'm a little older. Now, going, I tell you, you know, I'm, I'm 45, so I know we're close. So if you were to take it before you go work out, it can actually reduce the inflammation that is onset by working out. It just, just depends on if I up early enough yeah. because i got to get all the shit ready for the kids' school, so yeah, maybe summertime I I'll be able to take it, it beforehand. Do it. Then yeah. the, you know, yeah. But usually it's afterwards because even that little 12 seconds of undoing the cap and uh, dropping it, I, I need you don't those 12 seconds time. to get downstairs and do it. I know. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's I like know, I I'll yeah. wait till I drop them off, go to the gym, come home and do it. But the point of the story, you guys, is people out there, 
there listening, try the CBD at night. If you're having trouble with sleep and you think, oh, I just want to smoke a joint, but and you're realizing it's not really working, and then maybe you're getting a glass of wine, try a good yeah. CBD, you guys, because these studies out there are no joke. And for them to just release another study that I find to be what I stand by, I think it's the truth, and I think everybody knows it that I talk to, but I don't think everybody listening probably really does. And I think there's yeah. a lot of people out there, if you know somebody having trouble with sleeping, you know, I've always said that CBD should be part of your daily vitamins. Yes. There's absolutely. vitamin A, B, C, yep. D, and CBD. Take them all because you need them. I don't see the results when I take my vitamin D. Exactly. Just like you're not going to see right. the results right, right away when you take your CBD. Facts. But if you use it daily, you're going to get better and better and better and better. So that's the story, you guys. Love if you're it. out there Love having some sleep troubles, go out there because a low dose of CBD is effective as melatonin for improving sleep. If it's just more. better on your body, you guys. And that's I what we're concerned about. It. It's Cannabis Talk 101. When we come back, Daniel Sun. I think you got a good story for us. I do, I do. We'll be right back after this break. ready to live the life you crave at elevations nations they have created a community where authenticity and adventure meet curiosity a space for members to explore culinary adventure travel cannabis wine culture and unforgettable experiences providing access to an exceptional life full of elevated and inspired seasons you guys and elevations nations membership is key to having it all visit elevationsnations.com and discover new possibilities you guys were just at the grand opening of the new hotel right absolutely how was it as a matter of fact, I want Mary was selling hotel rooms, I think, right, on the side right. out there. We'll see. I we'll think <laughs> I think I'm the first person, maybe, to smoke cannabis in room in that room because they opened June second and we were there June first. So Daniel, I feel like you I've were. Made history. You were. You did. Congratulations make to Daniel put, making we're history. We're gonna get a little Daniel plaque on the wall. Yeah, 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 just yeah, like they put yeah, the yeah. dollar up, right? Yeah, you right. know, the first dollar. Sold. I was, I was How was the hotel, Daniel? Oh, it was I mean, we've so been there before, but I never stayed dope, there. Dude. So each room, I'm pretty sure has like a pool table. Super dope. I think mine was okay. Like a hold on, hold on. It doesn't though. Just oh. so you know, you got the suite, Daniel. You're so special. Oh, you got the suite. You got the pool table Thank suite you. there. Yeah, that's where you were. Every yeah, room has a pool table awesome. in it. What the fuck? The other rooms are awesome, but you got you are special, my friend. Oh, not everybody. Not everybody's room had my stuff in it. Look at me, Mr. Stopo Daniel. Now, hey, welcome, Daniel, to the club. I know how you feel, buddy. Man, you got man, it. Man. See, see, Cannabis Talk takes care of me. I'm not going to lie. Man. That's Thank dope. You. That's awesome. so, so you had a good time there, though. Dude, it was so spacious. Like, the the, the room temperature. I'm big on room temperature because it's hot <laughs> out in Vegas. If it's not, like, if you can't get cold fast, then I don't want to be there. Dude, I slept so good. Like dude. a baby? I did. I did. We uh, It was a good, clean space. It has a dope, like party vibe to it you know what i mean it's kind of fancy you know what i mean it made me want to put on my good shoes all of that you not know your I mean? wooden Leveling chunk less no Leveling not up. my not my little sandals <laughs> with the holes in them and stuff like that no none of that but it was it was a dope place we all had a good time you know and Mary, you're we with Elevation Nation, so you were yeah, there. What was yeah. your experience like there? You know, it was fantastic. So it's been really fun for me. I mean, I, as, as we were talking about before, I was in medicine and uh, cannabis. And, and when I saw that this hotel company was really like, like truly normalizing it, I was like, I want to be a part of this because I know these are the conversations you have about it, right? And this is really just what makes cannabis part of the everyday. And they've done a great job. You know, yeah. it was a, it was a interesting hotel before. It had a ton of character, and they really wanted to give an opportunity for 
people who are engaging in cannabis like to get out of mom and dad's basement, right? Come and put on your fancy shoes, put oh, on your yeah. dress, and yeah, just, and just have a amazing. little bit. It is a pool. We had a good pool. time at that pool before on another one. It was yes. before they owned it. Did. Yeah, we I did. Bet yeah. did yeah. <laughs> I fact, bet you did. I bet you did. At the party we were at, there was a girl stripping in that pool, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That's you when know you what? got the full body tan that one time, Joe. I did. I did. Just the turtle head didn't yeah. give me it. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it safe. Well, but it is one of the only, or I think there's like 10 European pools, right? So sun up to sun down, top optional. And it's like, oh, is that, is that really going 100%. down there? Yes, sir. Oh, I thought y'all was joking. Yeah, I didn't know. But no. I know last time, oh, I think no. it was that la- that way there too last time we were there. Because yeah. if I'm not mistaken, there were some girls that were, I just thought that was the party for the vibe of the night. Like, oh, fuck it. Let's go. It's always the vibe of the Lexi. <laughs> oh, right? well, that's Sexy cool. Lexi, go to the yeah. Lexi in Las Vegas, <laughs> folks. It's cannabis friendly. And of course, it's uh, ran by Elevations Nations. Daniel, you got a story for us, brother. I do, I do. And we're headed to California <laughs> with this news. So... Californians are in for Californians are in for a treat as they soon are able to get food, beverages, and cannabis all under one roof. Now the state assembly just passed a bill that allow. Oh, hold California on a second. To, We're all whoa, off. Whoa, whoa. What happened? What? Hold on. What happened? I don't You're know, really but loud. you turned us everything off. I'm loud. You're really loud now. Check, check, loud. check. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now again. But did you press just... solo or select? Either way, Chris, come over here. Don't keep going. Keep going. Come over here. Because you just turned all the mics off real quick. Keep going, Daniel. Hold on a sec. Go ahead. What did you say? I wanted to mention the topless pool real quick because, no joke, seriously, this just this morning, I actually, someone had a request. They wanted to see your boobs, Joe. Ah! I have, uh, 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 where's she at? Moon. Moon said she hasn't seen Joe's tits and she'd be willing, she would really love Let's to bring see Moon out here. Side Let's give her a round. Oh, 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 no, no, no. We'll, we'll save it for Vegas. So I'll, I'll do a whole, you know, I'll, I'll wear my top. actual conversation we had this morning. That's why it's so funny because we were literally. I think me and Mark this. Carnes will wear matching tops. I think his will be a double D, mine will be a D, but you know what I mean? It'll be a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mark Carnes found that. Um, his weight, that is. Oh, hey, Mark, good to see you over there. Can't miss you, buddy. Sorry, welcome back. I don't know why we're throwing Mark Carnes under the bus right now. Blue, why'd you text me and say make fun of Mark? That's terrible. So go Mark. ahead, Dad. I, I love Mark. Good Mark's a good one. Mark. Matter hey, of Mark. fact, where's that poster at, Mark? I haven't seen it around the office lately. Did you throw it away somewhere? I've seen it burning out back. There. Yeah, I, I lost the poster of you that we made. Mark Carnes, I made a funny poster of him. But go ahead, Daniel. I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. Well, the State Assembly for California just passed a bill that's going to allow California California's localities to have the right to approve the sale of food and non-alcoholic beverages inside legal cannabis dispensaries. Oh, in the dispensaries Absolutely, now. Absolutely, because the current state law prohibits any food or beverage to be in any right. recreational. You got it. You can only go to the one low, 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 or whatever it was. Yeah. Wait, is it infused food? Or no, is it no, just no, like uh, you just regular. You can go buy whatever. a burger and and your weed at the same time. And see, yeah. that's that's my question that I want to bring to the table. See now, what type of establishments will we be seeing? Are we going to be seeing a uh, a damn a dispensary with like a hot dog lady on the side, <laughs> or are we going to be in the the old school Red Lobster? Like, um, smoking hey, those biscuits section. at Red Lobster oh are gosh. still no joke. <laughs> Old school Red Lobster. I love those Red biscuits. Lobster. And you know what? Breaking news: We have Moon from the office <laughs> coming in, and she's been a big fan of Joe Grande for years. And oh, Moon, I'll show you my boobs later. Not right now. It's no big deal. That's not a Chris, problem. Chris wants to see them that's, too. That's Chris not a problem. You guys know I'm not afraid to expose myself. Please. Absolutely. <laughs> that's never been a fear of mine. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go, so we'll, we'll record it. Oh, she's ready. She's like, I'm Don't I'm worry, Moon, I'll show you. <laughs> Daniel, so you're saying this is brand new for dispensaries to start opening up now that they could have a full-on restaurant inside the location? And not only that, Joe Grande, they're allowing, once it passes through Senate, they're also going to allow them to have live venue like live uh music yeah exactly just like a 420 bank in palm springs only it could be a restaurant live venue all that all well, it could be like a regular store. restaurant and a dump like, but right? yet they're selling cannabis there too so it's a full-on dispensary that means they're gonna have to get bigger spots because a lot of these dispensaries are so small then you got to get the kitchen license in there unless they're just serving regular sandwiches yeah, or exactly. something random but you'd have to pass all the other codes which i'm sure is not a big deal but finding a dispensary that also has a kitchen Eek! They've already built it out and spent millions doing that. Well, Good luck. But like, do y'all have do y'all have smoke laws here? Because in Seattle, like you can, I'm, I'm from Seattle, live in Seattle now, but you can't. There's no like you can't smoke anywhere 25 feet 
between within a restaurant. Any doors? Or, no, I mean outside any door or window. So y'all y'all don't have that law here? No, there you or can't is it do that be like here cannabis either. Elixirs? You have to have a smoking so area section please. in California as well. Oh, so they don't even have a smoking area section. Yeah. It's it's going to be interesting, That's Daniel. Cool. I I think it's cool because I you know everybody a wants to eat food and I think that if you <laughs> cater any place with good food. Good food calls anyone, right? It doesn't Absolutely. matter. I mean, even oh, if yeah. we see, as you mentioned, the, the hot dog guys, as uh, Connor and I were driving home the other night on a late night, we almost pulled over and got some bro, food that just smelled so bomb tempting, on the corner that these cats were making. And we we're like, Whipping okay, we're about to get a taco and a hooker on the same corner <laughs> <laughs> on Beach Boulevard. Right, if it's the same place Beach I Boulevard's it got amazing. it all. Bro. Exactly. So, you know what I think you're going to see? I think you're going to see more cannabis infusion chefs, right? You have oh, so many absolutely. of those now. Yeah. And, yeah. and the thing, though, is that they're not like they're, they kind of got to do it on the lowdown, right? Because you're not, you can't touch it. It's all these things. So by allowing that, you're. I think you're going to do. You're going to. You're going to see some really good things. You're going to see balanced infusion. You're not going to see people like dumping, you know, 50 milligrams of THC in every appetizer or something. It's going to again, you know, just like normalize it. I feel like that's kind of a cliche word, Absolutely. but it's not, right? So yeah, come eat and. and Get your food infused. Maybe it's CBG or CBD, right? And not only that, then they could have the drinks too that are infused. Absolutely. There's so many companies out there that have so many great, you know, infused drinks. Hopefully they can allow that. They'll they'll, they'll have infused drinks probably on the dispensary side, but like this law specifically just allows food and non alcoholic drinks, also live entertainment in the dispensary world. But if you already have a product line of, of lemonades or whatever with THC, CBD, whatever it is, I'm sure. You're allowed. To it's real random you know. that you bring up a food story, but I like that. That's yeah, I, I'm fucking obsessed with food, Joe. I don't know what's going on. You and me both, brother. Who are we kidding? <laughs> like, I wasn't way bigger than you. When we come back, Connor, I know you got a story for us, too. It's yeah. Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this break. Cali Effects is full and broad spectrum hemp extracted products contain CBD, CBG, and some 1,300 other elements, you guys, that are naturally derived substances. From the hemp and the plant, check out the tinksters, the waters, the topicals, and the vape collection. Go feel the effects with Cali Effects. CaliEffects.com is the site. Want to thank everybody around here that makes it all happen. Marcus, Mondo, Moon, Teddy the Show Dog, Jessica, Daniel, Diego, Connor, Cam, Beach Bar, Salar, Ali, Sunday, Pitt, Mark Carnes, Chris Franchino, Jennifer, Erica, and Elvis, thank you guys all for doing everything that you do. And thank you, Goldie, as well. I just talked to Goldie the other day. He told me to tell you guys all hello. Yeah, and uh, Connor, and I know you got a... this weekend, too. Did he? Yeah, I he miss you, Goldie. <laughs> What's going down, you. Connor? I know you got a good story for us. So uh, we're going to head over to the East Coast in New York for this one. <laughs> and uh, lawmakers are scrambling to fix New York's struggling rollout of retail cannabis. And at the moment, um, you know, New York does have uh, a system for, you know, being a retailer of cannabis in New York. However, it's not going according to plan. And uh, there's a lot of farmers out in the state of New York that are struggling to get rid of like thousands of pounds of products. Oh yeah, they have now apparently too much cannabis because there's only five stores open or something like that out there. They're supposed to open X amount. They have 300 licenses out there with five stores open. No, it's super, it's all sorts of sounds weird. Sounds like the CBD game a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, right, right? Like the CBD game. It, but, yeah. but it sounds like October. you right, know what I mean? It's right. like October in New York all over every month. No, sounds like totally. $25 eighths around Connecticut <laughs> and Philly or something. Like if not $15 eighths, <laughs> you know what I mean? Race for Shout real. out yeah. to the East Coast with that. <laughs> so basically, you know, since New York legalized uh, marijuana to be sold in the state, there's only been 12 total uh, retailers that have been open, um, which that in itself is 
you know, kind of alarming because you've had a long time. And like you said, the amount of licenses. that So have, 12 legal open. Yeah. 12 right. Legal. There's a ton of them there that are not legal. And I think that's the issue. And it's hard for regulation to keep their eye on it. Totally. Right? Like who's legal? Who's not? Where is it going? Totally. And, you know, one peculiar fact that I read about this was that they're not allowed to legally have an indoor grow. And so when you think about New York, you can't grow year round. The climate is, so there's a sneaky is, is they insane in to keep to keep Their people yeah the, yeah so yeah. i thought that was kind of the the whole crutch of the situation where like if you had these indoor grows then you have i think you could have these people that you know could put out enough product to where they could sell it whereas you know they're having to do these outdoor grows that you know they have don't have the right climate may not have the right equipment and uh you know they don't they got time against them so you know my question is is like why does it always feel like that the smaller farms are getting, you know, getting the short end of the stick in all these states with the licenses, cultivating, being able to put up a storefront? Money, like, money, money, money. Well, and not only right? that, they, these, they just weren't ready yet out there, right? They, they yeah, gave this true. and then they didn't even have enough legal uh, testing labs. They didn't have this. They didn't have I that. I mean, Joe, it happens everywhere, right? It's, it's, You're going to see testing labs get shut down. I mean, it's They're part of the like game, though, that we're doing, right? right? Like cannabis, let's just face it, just became legal not that long ago. There's still several states that aren't legal recreationally, three that have no right. legal anything still in this country. Yeah. So everyone is still learning, so to speak. Yeah. And, you know, you got these guys that when you start thinking, okay, I'm going to grow, I'm going to grow big. <laughs> so they grew big and now they're going, shit, I can't send my product anywhere. No one's buying my stuff now. And you're right. It sucks for them. I feel bad for the cats yeah. out in New York. Not totally. But on the side note, I mean, let's just keep it 100. You know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> the sale's going to go out the yeah, side yeah, door. Exactly what, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. It's happened in California. It happens in California. It's going on right now. You have brands that do the exact same thing, and people always want to cry and complain about the illicit market. Well, this is the way we set it's it up. Repeats itself. Right? I mean, yep. state you, by state. We're the country see it said that the time. the system is set up for that to be that way. Right. You right. know what I mean? It's I like do. it's not so simple. Where oh, these guys in New York can grow now they grew yeah, too much. No. What are they supposed to do with it? Fucking burn it? Yeah, no. no. They gotta sell it well, out the you, back door. You know, in some states, that's what they have to do. They, they have do. to destroy exactly. it in that's Seattle. You have to destroy it. That's how we started our patient donation program. It was like you guys have to pay to destroy. Oh, California extra too. What you they, have, they they make they right? quote unquote make you burn it right. Yeah. And we've seen yeah. so many companies, we've yeah, seen so many it. videos <laughs> that they burn it. Yeah. But you're right. They should give it all to veterans. They should yeah. give it at a reduced price to patients. Well, so that's what we do. We started that. We would go to the dispensaries and say, listen, you know, y'all can give it to us for a dollar. Right. You've got to get rid of it. It's cheaper for you to do that. And then we can donate it to patients who are on the registry and you can actually do good. And I guess kind of turn around and stick it to them. Well, right? hopefully no, New York's going to figure idea, that out. Actually. Yeah. yeah. It just sucks to see all these farmers. You're right, though, Connor. These guys get screwed. Oh, well, yeah. And there's you know, so there's, many farmers. It's heart and soul. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's not like yeah. the only stipulation either is that they can't grow indoor. Like right here, it's saying that they're also being required to pay 20 million upfront to enter the retail market. And so, you know, then you have the banks that are giving out these low interest loans for all these companies. So, you know, they got this whole system going where they're, you have to pay a whole bunch of money to be able to actually get any skin in the game. And along with that, New York as a state has been uh, jumping up uh, medical, medicinal cannabis companies, jumping them up in the queue for licenses. And also the Cured program, yep. right? The, the convicted felons or, or, you know, those people that are in jail. But I have to just say something real quick to what you just said. $20 million to even get in the game of licensing. So in Seattle, it was $250 a license. Right. Oh that was God. it. And then and then people were turning around. Investors were coming in. I'll pay you a million. Oklahoma was free. Just sign every, up. right. Yeah. But every state is doing something so different. And it's just like that price keeps going up, 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 up. And that's ridiculous. And, I mean, it's come on. Right. Come the on. Turn around. I mean, you don't. You, we pay this and we can't even sell. You don't even have enough life. In Ohio, it was even even to apply. It was one hundred and fifty thousand. Right. So you're already pushing it to the monopolies. I mean, it is what it is. Right. And I mean, that's that's even worse right there. Yep. It's hard for these small guys. I think you said the best. The small guys, the guys that started it. You know what I mean? They're so many It's all for legalization, right? Yeah. That's the thing that's sad to me is that they're all going, we want it federally legal. We want it to be out there. You know what that means? It means you're gone. Yeah, you're gone. Right? You're gone. It's a hard thing. We love it. We hate it. But you know what? We're just reporting the news. It's, it's Cannabis Talk 101, you guys. If nobody else loves you, we, we do. do.